Welcome back to another edition of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. And I might have been hit by a car, and I really don't have use of my right arm. But that doesn't mean we don't still have awesome dev news to get into. Or maybe it's just the pain meds, but no, we have great stuff. First up is the Azure Red Shirt Dev Tour Europe Edition. Say that three times fast. Just like we did in the United States, Scott Guthrie will be showing off and coding live on stage in three cities, including Berlin, Munich, and Paris. Check out the websites for all the information and register. It is free, so be sure you show up. Next up, there's a new preview version of Visual Studio 2017, version 15.6 Preview 2. And there's also a new version of Visual Studio for Mac, version 7.4 Preview. Now, there's lots of new stuff in both of these releases, especially when it comes to building stuff with Xamarin. So be sure to check out the blog posts for everything new. On Channel 9 this week, you definitely want to check out the latest episode of the If Dev Windows Show, where Vlad and Nicola focus on mixed reality. Check it out. It's a fun video. They both have like you know, the helmet's on, and, and it looks really fun. Next up, when creating an Azure App Service, .NET Core is already pre-installed, which is great, but it's only the 32-bit .NET runtime. So in a new post, Glenn Condren, draw him, he basically walks us through a few ways you can get the 64-bit runtime running on Azure App Service. Coming up, our friend Michael Crump is back with his Azure Tips and Tricks series, and this time he's got tips for working with the Azure Storage Explorer. So check out his post. It's a really great look at how to use a very cool tool. One of my favorite stories this week is that PowerShell Core 6.0 is out now in general availability. And this is a new edition of PowerShell, and it's cross-platform, and so it works on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And what's awesome about this is that it's open source, and it's built for heterogeneous environments and hybrid clouds. So with this release, you get official Mac and Linux support, and the Linux support it actually runs across a ton of different distributions. There are even some community packages for those that aren't officially supported. And if you want to get really nerdy with it, there are some experimental packages for Raspbian for the Raspberry Pi and Windows on ARM32 and Windows on ARM64. Speaking of open source, Angular 5.2 is now available. Now, this is a minor release that is basically a drop-in replacement for Angular 5.1, and it contains a lot of bug fixes. But the reason I'm highlighting it is because one of the new features is that it has support for TypeScript 2.6. So that's really great for all you TypeScript fans. Now, last week, we told you about the Meltdown and Spectre CPU vulnerabilities, and there are still a lot of ramifications that are happening with that. And this week, uh, Microsoft's Terry Meyerson, he posted a blog post about the performance impact that Spectre and Meltdown have on Windows systems, specifically when the mitigations are um, installed and enabled. Uh, there's also new documentation on docs.microsoft.com for guidance on how to mitigate against the speculative execution side uh, channel abilities in Azure and what you can kind of expect from performance hits when you do that. All right, now it's time for my one-armed pick of the week. And this week, my favorite story is that Skype and Signal are working together to bring end-to-end -end encryption to private conversations in Skype. Right now, this is only available for Skype insiders on both Windows and all, actually all platforms, Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. It is opt-in rather than default, but this is still a great way to use Skype to send secure messages with end-to-end -end encryption powered by the open signal uh, protocol. The encryption covers chat files, um, audio uh, messages, but it doesn't cover audio or video files, so keep that in mind. Well, that does it for me. Um, I'm going to go rest my arm. But for the rest of you, um, let us know what you think of the show. If you have any comments, if you have any things you want to see us do more of, hit us up in the comments. Also, uh, tweet me um, on uh, Twitter, and we will see you next week.